Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Lilly and I'm from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and I have the pleasure of talking to you today about the Kids First DRC Patient and Foundation Partnership. So the Gabrielle Miller Kids First DRC Patient and Foundation Commitment. The partnership is based on the opportunity to learn from the pediatric cancer and structural birth defect communities to capture, synthesize, and prioritize the unmet needs for development of the Gavin Miller Kids First DRC portal, website, and series. Our charge began with the call to action, working together to put kids first. Over the past year, we had the opportunity to work with over 32 patient and foundation representatives and I believe over 30 are viewing today. Our work consisted of conducting requirement gathering through in-person meetings, teleconference, webinars, surveys, and real-time polls. We were able to map the key findings from those interactions to form the requirements to develop our roadmap. From July, through December 2017, we held a technical meeting, an annual meeting, a patient and foundation workshop, and then starting in January, using the key requirements that we found, development began in iterative cycles using surveys, webinars, um, and uh, email communication as feedback mechanisms. We heard from the community um, a requirement was to know more about the investigators in the Kids First DRC, the diseases, data, availability, accessibility, and, and how they could interact. So in response, we deployed a Kids First DRC Twitter and Facebook channel, and to date have over 30,000 Facebook impressions and over 100,000 Twitter impressions. We also began to present at conferences creative posters and infographics for distribution of information. To create a consistent mechanism for providing information, we began the development of the Gabrielle Miller Kids First DRC website. The website has over 30 pages covering the questions we received from the community, with the main goal to drive and support the use of the Kids First data resource portal. The findings called out for the website to align and support the FAIR principle. And we went through an alpha and beta stage of the website to iteratively develop to meet those goals. As of today, we have over 1,600 users on the website and through the analytics, we will continue to tweak and provide content to meet the needs of the community and the questions being asked. Our partnership efforts extended again to the portal to ensure the requirements we heard for understanding the accessibility and usability of the data were included. We made and we tried to make account creation very simple. And from our analytics, we can see that it takes less than two minutes for users to register. Um, and registration is open to the public. I think that's something we wanted to communicate today that anyone can go to that URL and create a Kids First DRC portal um, account. Since September 10th, we have seen 201 portal users. We were able to gather information on the users to know that 163 um, are identifying as researchers, 24 as community members, 7 as patient families, and 7 as healthcare providers. And through our partnership, we hope to strive to keep meeting the requirements gathered from the community and hope to have an open channel of discussion uh, to make sure that we can help drive that impact for clinical translation. As part of the webinar today, we additionally asked for questions from the community. And I have gathered them uh, together for Adam Resnick to um, address. So I'll turn it back over to him. So uh, 
thanks again, Jenna, and again, thank you for uh, the community members who have participated today. Uh, obviously, uh, those of you who have participated, we're doing this entirely on, on your own time and out of your own intention to participate in something that we think is transformative. Uh, really committing a lot of time, effort, input, communication in ways that um, you know, we really feel privileged uh, to have as members of our uh, community. Some of the questions we received are the following, and I'll try to be brief. Uh, some of them we are also going to try and address um, in the context of some of the presentations, um, and some of them I think have been partially addressed in some of the presentations today, but I'll try to go through them, potentially engage some of our partners here today if I not fully answer them uh, to speak up uh, here around the table. Um, in terms of the biggest hurdles that we've had to overcome, uh, really I think it, it is um, the hurdle of trying to both meet uh, the accelerated uh, timelines that we are committed to, uh, ensuring that we produce a quality environment that supports research, while yet recognizing that this is going to be an iterative process. Balancing those um, different requirements to offer attention, um, you recognize that uh, users in the community want access as rapidly as possible to data sets, while at the same time we're developing more and more features within the portal and uh, platform. Balancing these are going to be a continual process, uh, and it's going to require significant engagement uh, with the community in doing this. There are uh, really a high number of barriers, um, but the part that I think is most informative is to make sure we define them as we forward. I think we recognize that um, this is a new initiative, uh, unlike uh, very many others who have been performed before. And so uh, the reality is that uh, some of the barriers and challenges that emerged were not predictable. Um, this really requires a very um, a rapid and iterative response around some of these challenges as we move forward. Uh, but really, we have an amazing team uh, that really is dedicated to this process. And by and large, because of the level of transparency and openness around the challenges that we are trying to address, the community and partners themselves become true members in addressing these challenges. And that's going to continue to be a theme within the development of the Kids First platform. How can we use Kids First data for health services and benchmarking? I think this is something that we actually uh, want to learn. Um, you know, making large-scale data sets available in a harmonized way um, has served the community and other initiatives very well to develop such um, platforms. How the kind of work that we are doing here within the Kids First across uh, a very diverse of these landscapes across two very different categories of diseases, how that actually gets adopted by the community is still a challenge uh, and still an opportunity. Healthcare right now is, uh, like science, still somewhat siloed. Um, clinicians are highly specialized, uh, services are highly specialized, uh, and these are the things that we are actually working to integrate <coughs> research by, and how that integration gets translated back into that specialized landscape of the clinical environment it's something that we're going to continue to learn and work with the community to address. In terms of interoperability, uh, hopefully we've communicated up until now, and I think you'll see this as a really high-level theme uh, through the rest of the demonstration. This is uh, one of the highest priorities for the Kids First ERC uh, efforts. We have learned uh, as a community that while there are tremendous advantages uh, to focus efforts, like the ones that Javad described, focusing on a particular disease. What's also clear is that that has to be balanced with integration, uh, otherwise you just create a potentially bigger silo. Um, and so integration and interoperability within the DRC is a mandate, um, but we are, will also seek to be the most interoperable platform uh, there is, and that's a tall order for our team. Um, but I think we have uh, probably the uh, uh, biggest open door policy. In fact, I think we took the door off the hinges as it relates to uh, interoperability and we'll continue to do this moving forward. And I think we'll be able to demonstrate some uh, really initial steps uh, in doing this actually later today in the demos. 
what extent will this first and TV gap as a TPC overlap? I think there are several sessions within that question itself. Uh, there are actually some distinct entities in there. Um, the kit first is a fully uh, uh, integrated uh, environment with dbgap with kids first data sets. All kids first data sets are dbgap uh, data sets, and we're working very close uh, with uh, the dbgap um, environment and, uh, and managers uh, to continue developing this. And this, again, I think the community realizes that this is an ongoing development arena. <coughs> very large data sets are beginning to pass uh, existing environments, even within dbgap, and this has actually turned out to be a unique opportunity for a newly emerging platform like Kids First to further co-develop uh, the landscape around authenticated access via dbgap um, and allow users to seamlessly navigate this. And I think you'll see uh, some more of this being rolled out in the near future. Secondarily, at least on the cancer side, um, uh, you'll uh, hear some more about this later on today from some of our key members and top members. But uh, as long as every uh, step, we make an immediate assessment as to how data sets can be further empowered through integration. And there are already, there's already clear alignment for integration and cross-data cross set discovery uh, between, for example, the Genomic Data Commons at the NCI and the efforts within Kids First. And these are high priority initiatives that you'll hear a little bit more about later on today and how we're going to continue developing this. Recognizing that the entire, what I call, big data uh, community uh, is in flux as we work together to define the optimal strategy uh, to fully empower data, interoperate around data, maintain governance, and support the real time and accelerated research efforts across what is just even a more diverse landscape than just within Kids First. What data types are available? Uh, the Kids First uh, program itself uh, and its funding of data generation uh, really focus on uh, whole genome sequencing and in the context of cancer, additional RNA sequencing as the entry point within the XO1 from the genomic perspective. Another high mandate, which we'll hear more about later today, is the integration of clinical and phenotypic data. You've heard from Javad, and you heard, you'll continue to hear this, that um, we as a community recognize that <coughs> where, um, you know, uh, another uh, uh, synergistic discovery opportunity emerges once you begin integrating across clinical, phenotypic, and longitudinal data with genomic data sets. And these are, again, additional data sets that are included within the DRC and will be, con will be continually developed around uh, because these are, are truly untried efforts uh, to date. Again, we'll continue to look for feedback from the community on how to do this in the best way possible. Lastly, we're also beginning by uh, to pilot other initiatives to bring other data types, uh, including imaging files, <coughs> files uh, into the platform, uh, and we'll continue to work on developing such resources within the platform in ways that, again, you heard to add a highlight, uh, but will be expansive beyond there. Importantly, the platform also permits researchers themselves to bring their own data uh, and intersect with kids first data. Within the workspace environment, you'll hear about later uh, from Seven Bridges. And that is a completely open-ended opportunity for intersecting the kinds of data sets that investigators or other entities can provide. Licensing terms is something that I think we as a community in general are still in flux in addressing. You heard earlier about the terms associated with uh, kids first data sets uh, in terms of IP or licensing um, uh, as guided by uh, dbgap processes. I think we as a community have not yet uh, fully addressed licensing terms in ways that essentially <coughs> are required and I think we've recruited and have really uh, world experts within our uh, DRC team as of late to help inform this further in the likes of the Handel's group. Will you integrate multiple, uh, most sample DCF files? The answer is yes, uh, and also provide raw data. Uh, we'd like to highlight that um, while we do actually uh, and will continue to engage in the processing and analysis of data via agreed upon pipelines and workflows, we recognize that these are likely to change as standards uh, and that individual users <coughs> may have better options or solutions uh, to use data sets. 
And so uh, the DRC will continue to not only just provide raw data or so-called source data across both clinical and genomic data, as well as the analytic and harmonized data sets that can support immediacy of use. Um, and we are very eager to continue work with the community on uh, implementing new workflows uh, for the processing of data and embedding those. And we'll have additional rollouts of programs to support such pilots. We heard from James earlier today, the initial workflows that are being explored in the animal model uh, generation. And again, this is going to be a key strategic integration point as well as existing data sets, recognizing that these are unique tools of both the cancer and non-cancer landscape to inform uh, the understanding of disease. Uh, so again, these are high priority efforts and actually intersect with one of the earlier questions on how interoperability can also support uh, some of the efforts within Kids First as model systems are um, a rich environment of development across the <coughs> uh, big data efforts currently within the NIH. These are really great questions and I really appreciate uh, the community uh, uh, providing them. Uh, hopefully you'll continue to provide such questions. Again, our, we have a, um, a really uh, high level of intent on listening to the community uh, and I think this first webinar is an opportunity for uh, all of you to engage us with questions, suggestions via the kidsfirstdrc.org uh, website. So I think uh, we're at the end of the first session of the day. Uh, we'll take a break at this point in time here locally. I hope uh, many of you will continue uh, to, or to hang on or come back uh, at the 12.50 mark for the second session of the day. That second session will really dive uh, more deeply into the technical and platform environment, the demonstration of what we hope are the initial rollouts of 